Hi guys, Andrew here with headphones.com. Today we're doing a video on our favorite picks of 2021. Now, this is just like last year's video, not going to be limited to products that just came out in 2021. And we're gonna do headphones and headphone related products. So it's not just all headphones, we're actually gonna have some other products in there as well, like DAX and amps and things like that. Now for this year, 2021, we're doing things a little bit differently. Last year, we didn't allow any overlaps and this time around, we're going to allow overlaps. So you're probably gonna see some products showing up on lists from multiple people here. And just in case it's not clear, these selections are not limited to products that came out in 2021. This is just as of now, uh, what our favorite picks were from the various different products that we got to review, which includes a lot of products that came out in previous years. So with these selections, you're getting a sense of how some of these new products that have come out this year stack up relative to some of the existing, you know, choices from previous years as well. Now, speaking of the people, we've got a couple new faces uh, along with uh, some of the ones you already know. And then I'm also bringing in some other folks you may, you may not know. We've got Alan joining us this time. And many of you guys know him as NetForce in a number of communities. Um, he is part of the Headphones.com customer service team. Uh, so he's going to be giving his picks as well. And then we've also got FC Construct. He is responsible for many of the written reviews that you see up on the Headphones.com reviews page. If you haven't seen those yet, definitely do check them out. So he's going to be giving his picks as well. Um, he often focuses on IEMs, but he's been getting headphones now as well. Now, speaking of which, if you are looking for a full breakdown of what our recommendations are as of the end of 2021, which is now, we've put together a number of buying guides for open back headphones, closed back headphones, and IEMs, all the way from $200 up to, you know, $5,000, $6,000. Um, and so uh, if you haven't checked that out yet, definitely do so. I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want a more detailed breakdown of this stuff, because there's only really so much time in a video to cover, well, the things that were sort of the highlights and the standouts for us at various different uh, price brackets. Now, just before we launch, into our picks of 2021. I also want to remind you guys, if you haven't done so yet, definitely sign up for the giveaway that we're doing at the end of the month. This is the biggest giveaway that we've ever done. And the more people we have signing up, if we hit our next milestone, we'll be, at, we'll be adding more headphones. And if we hit 60K by the end of the year, which seems a little bit unlikely at this point, but you never know what can happen in the last week. If we hit 60K, we're going to be giving away five Focal Clears, which is crazy. Um, in the meantime, we're at 50,000. So we're giving away uh, two Focal Celestes and one Clear. So even if we don't hit that 60k we're still going to be giving away roughly three thousand dollars worth of headphones at least at this point there will be a link to the sign up for that down below as well now with that out of the way let's get into our picks of 2021 i'm going to start it off with chrono all right so my top picks for 2021 and i suppose i'll go from least to most expensive so at the entry to budget level i gotta give my choice to the hd560s which you can kind of see is hanging out behind me on top of the Fonitor XC. So since I reviewed it about nine months ago, it's actually been my daily driver. Without a doubt, the headphone I listen to the most when I'm working, editing videos, or gaming. I just think that at its 199 price tag, although right now I think that most retailers have it on sale, it's just a very well-rounded headphone, solid performer, and a great alternative to the HD6 series headphones. So whilst I do think that those older Sennheiser headphones tend to be a little bit more detailed and more resolving. Like I said, I feel like the HD560S is just more well-rounded overall, so you get a more spacious sound stage imaging that's miles better than what you got on the HD600 and HD650, and it even has bass extension. So at its core, it's still a very, it still has like that Sennheiser signature sound, so very mid-forward, though it does have a little bit of a bright uh, treble frequency response. So that's the one thing I'll caution you about. If you don't like treble, if you really like warmer upper registers, then it might be uh, something to keep in mind because the lower to mid treble um, can be a little bit hot in the HD560S. But if you're not treble sensitive or if you're comfortable with using EQ, the HD560S is an outstanding option. As we move towards the high end, um, I've always loved uh, Odyssey headphones. I think that their full-size LCD uh, series is always offered at their respective price points some of the very best performance. And, and now this year with the 2021 revised version of the LCDX, I think that that will get my nod for headphones that are in that uh, for around the $1,000 price point because I think that with the creator's package is like twelve dollars or $1,300. And now that it actually has an amazing frequency response out of the box, one that doesn't really need EQ, even though it's just a tiny bit dark at around 4K, it's a very competitive headphone, one that I think is, I'm pretty sure it's less expensive than the HD100S as well as the Hyphen and Aria, but it delivers performance that is at that caliber or maybe even a bit higher. So 
it's a great headphone. The only thing that holds it back, I think, is the, the fact that it's using that traditional LCD series style design. So it's pretty hefty and kind of bulky. Some listeners might not mind the weight. It's not really a problem for me, but I know that some are more sensitive to that kind of stuff. So again, for the high end, my pick is the 2021 revised LCDX. And then for the ultra high-end Summiteer gear, yeah, uh, it's once again Odyssey. And I apologize because I imagine this is not the first time or the last time you'll hear this today, but it's got to be the LCD5. It's just a headphone that for me took it one step further. So early in the year, I listened to the Utopia and that was pretty impressive because I still consider it to be the best performing dynamic driver headphone that I've listened to. But the LCD5 is just that bit more refined. It's just so resolving and it has a very enjoyable frequency response whilst also addressing the weight and comfort issues that the LCD4 face. So, you know, if you can afford it, it's an incredible headphone. Uh, and lastly, I just want to give an honorable mention to the Final Audio DAK Pro. So if I hadn't had the opportunity to listen to the LCD5 before the year closed out, I think that would have been my favorite headphone. Um, it requires quite a bit of EQ in my opinion, but it's just such a unique sounding planar magnetic headphone. It sort of blends, in my opinion, some of the best qualities of the dynamic driver and planar magnetic headphones. So uh, let's see, let's recap. HD 560S, LCDX, um, what was it, LCD5, and then as an honorable mention, the D8K Pro. Hi everyone, Grover from headphones.com here, and today I'm gonna to be talking to you about my top picks of 2021. So to start off, a longtime favorite of the community, and frankly, they just do everything at this price point really, really well, the budget-priced Magni and Modi stack, now in its third and a half generation, depending on how exactly you count them. Either way, whether you pick Heresy Plus, uh, or whether you pick the updated ones, or whether you have an older pair, these are fantastic budget entries into a separate DAC and AMP stack. Next up is the AKG K371. This has an almost perfect match to the Harman target headphone response curve. Now, I have to say, it's not necessarily the last word in detail, refinement, or other technicalities, but if you want to hear what the Harman curve has to offer, and it is a very, very good tuning, this is a great headphone. It's also relatively inexpensive, coming in at a price point that's pretty affordable for most people getting started in the headphone hobby. I'd almost say it's a must-have to add to your stable, whether you're a very high-end headphone collector or whether you're someone who's just starting out in the hobby. This one is a fantastic headphone for a very fair price, and really, you can't go wrong with it. My last pick has been a very popular budget recommendation for many years in the headphone hobby, the Sennheiser Drop HD6XX, roughly equivalent to the HD650. Now, the thing that's really cool about this headphone it, other than the excellent and very balanced tonality, is the fact that it scales extremely well. If you want a headphone that's going to pair with a wide variety of amplification, tube, solid state, etc., from high end all the way to low end, this is gonna be a great choice. There are people who've been in the hobby for a long time who still say that this is their absolute favorite headphone, despite the fact that the price has come down quite a bit over the years. My first mid-fi pick is going to be the shit in Jotunheim. Now, at the price point, this represents a very powerful and really awesome headphone amplifier. It can take single-ended, balanced, output single-ended or balanced, and it does it all while sounding excellent, very clean, neutral, and clear. This pairs well with a number of excellent headphones, and it's never really sounded bad with anything I've plugged it into. My next pick is going to be the Burson Funk. The Burson Funk is really interesting because it comes from a new generation of amplifiers. It's a desktop speaker amplifier as well as a very powerful headphone amplifier. So this means that you really can have an excellent desktop system with passive speakers, headphones, and then your DAC of choice, and I think that's very, very compelling for a lot of people now who are exploring how to add speakers into their existing headphone collections. My final pick for mid-priced items is going to be the RME ADI2 DAC FS. This is just an excellent flagship style DAC with a headphone amplifier built in as an extra. Of all the DAC amp all-in-one combos that I've heard, this would be my choice for one if I was to own one. It also has a host of incredible features from a very flexible EQ to crossfeed to different filters in the DAC stage. You name it, this pretty much has it. For the high end, I have a couple of picks that are tube amps. The first one is gonna be the Amps and Sound Agartha. For me, I love a great directly heated triode amplifier. The Agartha is pretty much the embodiment of everything that I really love about tube amps. It has a sense of incredible dynamics, a great even tonality, 
fantastic treble, extremely smooth bass, and incredibly lifelike sort of reach out and touch it style mids. This is just everything that I would think you would want from an amplifier from the 30s and 40s. I can't say enough good things about directly heated triodes, and for me, this is one of my absolute favorite directly heated triode amps. It costs an arm and a leg, but I definitely encourage you to try one out if you get the opportunity. My next pick is another Ampson Sound amp, which would be the Forge. This is a really great alternative to something like an Agartha or a Kenzie if you have headphones that are a bit harder to drive. It's a more modern sound, it's a bit punchier, it's a slightly more colored sound than something like the Agartha, but it's very fast and it kind of gives you a taste of what tubes can do while also maintaining the powerful, tight bass that we come to expect from solid state amplifiers in the modern era. This is a fantastic choice if you really love solid state amplifiers but you want to see a bit of what tube amps can offer you without sacrificing some of the power and output current of a more typical solid state amplifier. If you have hard to drive headphones or planar magnetics and you've always wanted to try a tube amplifier, the Amson Sound Forge could be the one for you. Hey everyone, Peacock from headphones.com and today I'll be going over some of my year-end favorite products in various price categories. Starting under $250, I think that my first pick is going to be a bit of a surprise, but it is the CCA CRA. This one surprised me as well because it was actually not tuned like crap. It's still a V-shaped tuning overall, but the mid-range tonality is quite good this time around. It's just a little bit too much 3 to 5K Hertz. And then um, the trouble response is surprisingly well extended. I do find that the driver being used in the CRA is quite competent. It's a lot more slammy than a lot of KZ's other amps. None of them sound very good or have like very good technicalities, if you will. This is a bright IM. It's definitely going to be a little bit more fatiguing, but I do think that it is a solid pick if you're after that type of sound signature, especially at $15. I think my next pick is going to be a little bit more predictable, but it is the Tantrum HANA 2021. I just really like this IM. The overall tonality on it is a little bit more V-shaped than Harman. It's a little bit warmer, but it's just very pleasant to listen to. And I do find that the dynamic driver being used on the HANA 2021 is very competent from a technical perspective as well. Compared to the Moondrop Kado, for example, the HANA 2021 I find has better imaging. It sounds a little bit more 3D and holographic and the timbre as well, the pattern of decay is more pleasing to my ears. Moving into the $250 to $1,000 price bracket, I do have quite a few picks here just because I feel like it's a very crowded price segment. Um, my first pick, of course, though, is going to be the Moondrop Blessing 2 Dusk. This is just a very solid IM, particularly when it comes to the tuning itself. I really don't think that there's anything as well tuned as the Dusk in the $300 price bracket. I do think that the treble extension and the bass texture could use some work, but for $300, this is still sort of the default recommendation just by virtue of how well it's been tuned. My second pick would be the Dunu SA6. The SA6 follows a more warm, relaxed tuning compared to some of the other items in this price bracket that are emphasizing higher clarity tunings. Um, likewise, I do think that the SA6 could benefit from some more treble extension, but when it comes to just like the total package, there are very few items as solid as the SA6 for $550. My third and final pick for under $1,000 is going to be the Monarch Mark II. And I think this one is gonna make Kryn happy because I think he has it ranked as his highest item right now. Um, I don't think it's quite that good. The bass on it is kind of mediocre and the trouble response is sort of like a band-aid EST implementation in my opinion. But the mid-range detail and the resolution are simply phenomenal. Like even for $2,000, $3,000, I honestly cannot think of very many items that can match the Monarch Mark II. Maybe the Empire's Odin or the Elysian Annihilator, they might edge it out a little bit, but for $1,000, I really don't think there's anything that has a mid-range as resolving as the Monarch Mark II. Moving to over $1,000, my first pick is going to be the Symphonium Helios. And I own this one, so there's definitely some bias going on here, but I do legitimately think that it is a very, very good IM. It's not the most natural listen. It has more BA timbre compared to the Monarch Mark II, but the transients on it just sound very energetic and it sounds like it has a lot of life to it. And I suspect that part of this is just baked into the treble response, which is simply exemplary. Similar to my comments on the Monarch Mark II's mid-range, I really cannot think of many IMs that have it beat even at the $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 dollars price bracket. Uh, maybe the Elysian Annihilator has a beat, but we're talking like over $3,000 at that point, right? Outside of this, I do think that the Helios would benefit from some more mid bass and the shells themselves are very chonky, but if you get around these two issues, it is a very, very solid pick for its price point. My final pick for over $1,000 is going to be the 64 Audio U12D. While I definitely think that there are some items that edge it out in one category or another, as a total package, I really cannot think of a better IM than the U12T. It's still my default recommendation whenever someone asks which flagship IM they should buy, and they sort of don't have an idea of what they want. 
But yeah, there you have it. Those are my picks for the year. Oh, it's not an IM, but a headphone that I think merits mention is the Phil Foam. This was probably my favorite headphone of the year. The bass on the Phil Foam is simply phenomenal. And I say this in the sense that you can slap on gobs of sub bass and EQ and it's never ever going to distort. Um, just crazy decay, crazy dynamics. Um, the trouble response is a little bit peaky, but it never gets quite out of hand. And I do think that overall, this is a terrific value for whatever the price was. I think it was like $700 when I, um, at, when I asked at CanJam. But yeah, great headphone, probably my most favorite headphone of the year. Hey guys, my name is Alan, and I'm here today to give you my budget, mid-level, and top tier picks for headphones. My budget pick would be the Sennheiser HD 6XX from Drop. I would say it's one of the best deals around. Um, the headphone strikes a great balance to me. It's very easy to listen to, and it scales quite well with better amps and DACs. My honorary mention is the AKG K371. It's an excellent closed back headphone with great tuning. My mid-level pick is the Moondrop Variations. Excellent bass and solid tuning overall. The variations are a fun IEM and well built. They have become my go to IEMs as of late. My honorary mention I would say the Hi Fi Man Ananda. I started out with the Hi Fi Man HE400 as one of my first headphones and still love Hi Fi Mans to this day. My top tier pick is the Focal Utopia. The level of detail the Utopia offers, combined with the build, the comfort, and performance, still makes me love these headphones years after their initial launch. My honorary mention is the Sennheiser HD800S, probably one of the most comfortable headphones around still. It has an excellent technical performance, I just use a little bit of EQ to match my tastes. Hello, I am FC Construct, and these are my top three picks for the year. So in the budget category, uh, there was no doubt in my mind that the winner was the 7 Hertz Timeless. I had briefly considered, you know, the Moondrop Aria, an IEM that a lot of people are familiar with, but to me, the Timeless won the prize because it kind of came out of nowhere. Like, nobody knows who 7 Hertz are, but they somehow out of nowhere produced, you know, a superb IEM with great tuning and technical performance that's almost unmatched for its price. And at $220, I do think it's affordable enough that a lot of people looking to get into the hobby can try without overcoming, um, without needing to overcome the idea of sticker shock. But there are a couple of downsides with the timeless. The first is that you know it's pretty fit dependent, um, especially I'm using the stock tips here, um, and it can affect base performance. And the second thing I would consider is that it doesn't isolate very well. As you can see, there are three fairly large vents up here um, that kind of hinders its sound isolation if you're moving out and about the house. For the $500 category, I went with the Dunu SA6. It, I probably reach for this IEM the most out of all the ones that I have when I leave the house. It has a very pleasant and comfortable tuning with a sound that manages to be clean and crisp without any hint of, hint of fatigue. It's also strikingly beautiful with this orange, you know, wooden kind of burnt shell in there. Um, and I find it extremely comfortable with its shell design that's small and highly ergonomic. It's perfect when I'm getting out and about. Now, that said, if you're trying to chase, you know, the best bang for your buck in terms of sound quality, uh, the Duno SA6 is not it. Um, at $550, I do think it is competitive around, you know, the mid-fi landscape, um, but it's, it's just not at the very top of it. And finally, for the kilobuck range, I'm going with an older IEM, the Sony IER M9. And while it's been out on the market for a few years now, the M9 has really stood the test of time as a so-called gatekeepers for the $1,000 and up range. While its warm tuning does take a little bit of getting used to, and I do have some complaints against Sony's proprietary balance armature design on the M9, I do think that it is a highly coherent IEM with great resolution and layering. And to me, it truly is the benchmark to which Hi-Fi should be um, matched against. And while I don't think the M9 is the best IEM on the market by any means, it continues to hold its ground year after year especially as the market has evolved. And there we go. These are my top three picks for 2021. Um, but stay tuned. There are a lot of really exciting IEMs still to come and review for next year. There's especially a couple that I'm really excited to talk about and I actually have on hand, but haven't had the chance to fully review them at the time of this 
video. Um, so keep an eye out for headphones.com on their reviews page. Uh, see you and happy holidays. Bye-bye. Okay, so for me, my budget audiophile product of the year is the Qtelix 5K. That is a Bluetooth little dongle DAC thing that uh, is just unbelievably versatile and useful, and I'm just sort of digging into how amazing this thing is now. And I said this in the video, essentially it's like having Equalizer APO in your pocket. It's extremely versatile. Now it doesn't have the power output that something like the IFI Go Blue has, but for me, when I'm using a device like that, I'm generally on the go, and so I have portable headphones or IEMs with me, which don't really require as much power as some of the more demanding devices where something like the IFI Go Blue would be a little bit more essential. Um, so for me, the power output limitation there is not a deal breaker, and I just find that the, the EQ functionality plus all the auto EQ presets in there, are it's just unbelievably useful. And it's super inexpensive, so I can't think of a more useful device um, at a very competitive price tag. Now my honorable mention for under $200, I'm not sure what it's at right now, I think it's actually around, closer to 150 is the AKG K371. This is a fantastic close back reference style headphone with a simply fantastic frequency response and tonal balance. This is a headphone, I know I've been ranting about this headphone on live streams and stuff like that, but again, if I could have everybody own one headphone, it would be this headphone, so that at the very least people would know what this kind of sound is like and why this kind of reference sound is important. When we get into the high-end stuff or we get into more esoteric tunings or you know whatever, we can flavor it up in any way that we want, but it's important to have that reference point, in my opinion. Now for my mid-range pick, it's actually these. Um, it's not actually these. This is the Focal Allure with the Utopia pads, but it's the Focal Alex. Um, and also the Focal Clear, which now uh, has had a price reduction down to $990. I know that's still a lot of money, so it's maybe a little bit closer to high end, but you get the idea. These Focal open back headphones, I think, are uh, fantastic headphones that do a wonderful job of that sort of sense of punch and visceral impact, along with a generally well-balanced tuning there. And then lastly, for my ultra high-end pick, it is going to be the Odyssey LCD 5. Now, some of you guys are going to be asking, well, what about the Sisvara? What about the Utopia and some of those other ones that exist already? And my answer to that is actually, if you don't EQ, I think those headphones still sound better. But if you do EQ, the LCD 5 is a headphone that is essentially equal or better in just about every category that I care about. Um, than the Sisvara. And I think more importantly, the LCD5 represents a real breakthrough when it comes to headphone technology and being able to bring the ultra high-end flagship level performance to a much more reasonable weight. So what they've done with their parallel uniforce trace pattern design, uh, where it's essentially a variable thickness and size for the trace depending on where the flux density is stronger or weaker to sort of accommodate for that and that effectively allows for more uniform movement of the diaphragm. Uh, that, in my mind, is is real progress in headphones, and I really hope they bring this technology down to some of their more you know modestly priced headphones, because now it means that you don't need to have those crazy double-sided magnet structures in you know in headphones that make them you know 700 grams or something ridiculous like that, like the LCD4. So the LCD5 is my pick there for the ultra high end, not because it outclasses the Susvara and the Utopia at the things that those headphones do really well at, but more so because of what it means for headphones moving forward and what's possible with these types of devices. But as I mentioned, we've got a more detailed breakdown of various different price points that are a little bit more specific. So if what we've mentioned here doesn't really fit with your particular budget, we've got recommendations at a wide variety there. Additionally, if you're totally new to high-end headphones, I've put together a bit of a buying guide there that's gonna help you get a sense of what to look for, how to determine sound quality before you buy, like for example, frequency response and the importance of that. And then also a number of things to watch out for because as we've learned in this industry and in this hobby, there's just a lot of hype and there's a lot of craziness out there and ideally this is a, just sort of a path to help navigate you through that because oftentimes it can be a little bit difficult to understand what to put most of your spend towards and what to watch out for so um, definitely check that out as well anyways that does it for this video thanks for taking the time to watch it and we'll see you in the new year bye for now